Look at Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Now, it's my intention this morning to practice tenor, but kind of since the last half an hour, even though I've not listened to it, and I genuinely haven't, the earworm that's been going through me is the Sidney Bechet version sorry, of Summertime, which I'm going to be doing at this celebrating Blue Note gig at the Cambridge Arts Theatre in just six and a bit weeks. And I was talking in the other vlog about procrastination and the big thing that kind of motivates me away from procrastinating is a looming deadline. And the thought of nearly a thousand people in a theatre expecting me to play this perfectly is a very, very good motivator to get off my backside and get it practised. And I'm kind of surrendering a little bit to the muse, as it were, in terms of, okay, it's almost like, okay, brain, that's the track you're sticking through my head right now. Let's get it done because clearly somewhere in my subconscious it's trying to get it practiced. So I've got a warm up on the soprano, I'm going to find that Sidney Bechet track and I'm going to transcribe little bits of it and play along to it and try and just pick up the general feel. I'm not looking for an exact copy, that kind of wouldn't be, wouldn't be right, but I'm looking to play it so I'm tipping my hat to Sidney Bechet, so it's like the Blue Note recording, but not completely the same. So definitely the head will keep similar, but kind of other bits, the solo certainly will be my own, but influenced by Sidney Bechet, which is weird, because kind of my biggest influence on summertime usually has been Coltrane. This is a great, if often underused, uh, book for warming up, the Jackie McLean uh, sax warm-up. Some days, I'd see today I don't feel too bad, but um, some days if I'm not, sh you know, I'm kind of lacking in, in motivation, which I'm not today, but it's here and it's a good idea just to kind of sometimes use a book just to help you get through and kind of be prescriptive about your practice. Some days, you know, it's good to just go with the flow. The problem of doing that sometimes is you, if you go with your own flow, you'll end up practicing what you're good at and you'll end up practicing what you think you need to do. And sometimes when you're working through a book, it will actually address weaknesses and things like that. But don't always use a book. Now, long tones are never the most interesting thing to practice and certainly not to listen to, so well done for sticking, even though I've edited a lot of it along. But I love this uh, Jackie McLean exercise because it starts off by telling you to play each note loud, medium, soft, medium, loud. And not only do you have to try and match the dynamic across each note, so you know you want all your Fs to kind of, you know, your, your mediums to be either side of the soft to be the same volume, your louds to be the same, you also then really need to try and keep a consistent dynamic across each note you're playing. So as you're changing the note, you want to try and keep the dynamic the same as well. Very much focusing on breathing from your diaphragm and keeping the embouchure in the correct position. So that was that one. Let's do, um, I'm gonna do some more, but I'm gonna skip you ahead to summertime. Now, Jazz Session Man's not ideal for this because it's kind of a, well, it is like a mod, more modern swing, and I want that more traditional thing. But I just want to have a go at blasting through summertime, sort of Bechet style. So back to school day today for the children, that kind of first day back after that long break and kind of getting all ready now from Amy going, I hate school. But that was a little family tradition that my dad started. This was my very, very first day at school. There you go, 1985, sometime in September 1985. This is my second year at school, and I could drag the photo out to show Charlie because it's his second year, he's going into um, year one. And we, me and my brother were trying to work out which year it was. We could tell from the age of my sister, but also the fact that if you look in the second photo, my lunchbox is pretty much already destroyed from having a year of probably kicking it around the playground. 
This was my last of the pictures that I allowed my dad to take. There are some others that are in the sequence, but I don't have a copy of them. This was in 1997, so 20 years ago. I didn't allow a picture to be taken the year after, probably because I was still in bed having done a gig the night before, because my upper six year was pretty much dominated by being a professional musician and not really concentrate on my studies. Which says it's good and bad things. So school for me, why well, I kind of... I can't really remember the first school much that I went to there. I remember I didn't necessarily get on with it too well. It was, a, as I've mentioned in another vlog about the uh, Apple Watch being the mark of the beast, about the EU referendum, um, it was a little bit of a sort of slightly cultish school. Um, I'm not going to go into too much of it on a vlog right now. I may go into it another day. But thankfully my parents um, pulled me out of there and took me to Stanner, which I've mentioned about. If you watch the documentary, talk more about that. Stanner was a great school for music. It was not a music school as such. It was a state primary school. But what I loved about Stanner was that, you know, you were in the minority in years five and six, so that's kind of 10 to 11 year old, nine to 11 year olds, you would be in the minority if you didn't play an instrument, which is not the case even in that school anymore, which is such a shame. High school was tough, what I, we call high school in England, secondary school, that started at the age of 11. Not one person from my primary school went to my secondary school, which was kind of, that was tough going. I had to learn to make new friends, bit too young to get to that phrase, that sort of phase where you reinvent yourself um, and kind of again coming from that environment where you know music is the normality to kind of realizing what kind of the band geeks are that was a bit of a shock but didn't put me off kept going you know it was tough taking a tenor saxophone to school on the bus most days especially as I didn't have a shape case or anything you know that kind of uh, was a bit different and kind of you know I had to put it with the bully boys on that but there were pretty much left my instrument alone, I've got to say, I never really had any issues with that that way. And then after sixth form, my school didn't have a, a sixth form college, so kind of, I guess that's the high school graduation in the States, that kind of 16 to 18 year old uh, vibe that I didn't end up getting the picture for there. So yeah, it's interesting. I think one of the things I'd say, if um, I know kind of from the demographic things that, people, that YouTube shows me that a lot of people are around about the same age who are particularly are subscribers. Um, some people are a bit younger, some people are a little bit older. But kind of, if you're in that younger category or you have kids, maybe you've got one child at school, I've got to say that when you get both children into school, time just starts to pick up. And I'm sure some of the older people who watch this will tell me that, you know, kind of it gets even faster as I go along, which is, is slightly depressing. But, you know, kind of, I try and encourage, and if you are at school, if you're watching this and you're quite young, do make the most of it. I used to hate when people used to say, oh, school's best years of your life. I wouldn't say that necessarily, but they are enjoyable and you'll never get a time like that again. You know, you have a lot of years to work and to be a grown up and be an adult. So enjoy your childhood, enjoy the opportunity in one sense to have no responsibility. I do remember saying to my wife one day, you know, I kind of wish when I, I, my daughter was very young, I wish kind of the biggest decision I had to make in a day was which toys I played with. Um, you know, things change, don't they? So yeah, school days. Right, let's do a quick Q&A. Sorry, the light's kind of all coming from this direction. I haven't got time. Actually, let's switch that other light on. So that's slightly better. Not perfect, but we'll do. Uh, iReal Pro, really great that the, these guys have made a comment on my uh, um, video that I made about their app. Guys, thank you so much for making an amazing app and thank you so much for getting in touch. Couple of comments on the uh, Bird Live celebrating Charlie Parker. Um, Dave Clark said that Lee Connix is on the different sound and then uh, a few others were chiming in. Just a quick one, when I'm doing the vlogs, especially when I'm doing this, I am not scripting. I'm talking off the top of my head to a camera. It's a very odd situation. I'm recording every word. Now, I try and edit and try and think about what I'm gonna say all the time, but sometimes I'm genuinely just kind of think on my feet. My reason for saying about Paul Desmond was about his sound and remember how that's the most important thing you can have on an instrument Connitz did not have that influence outside of jazz that uh, Paul Desmond has had final question for this bit of the Q&A Gabriel asked me hi Dan I was wondering if you give me some advice on an issue I've come across recently so basically I've noticed that I have a real difficulty playing transcriptions to a backing track for example I can play the transcription at a faster tempo than it's supposed to be played without a backing track but I can't play it in the correct tempo with a backing track and I asked him, I said, um, are you playing them off the sheet music or are you learning them by ear? And he says, playing them off the sheet music. Therein lies the problem. And the reason I say that, Gabriel, is I have done that and I did do it. I was fortunate I was chastised by a better musician than I am, Bradford Marsalis, who said, you cannot learn anything really from reading a transcription book the way you can learn it from listening going through it by ear. Now, when a student first comes to lessons with me, I always talk either about this painting that... Uh, 
Peter did for my meta narrative album. But I talk about how stupid it is to put your ear up against that painting and expect to hear anything. It doesn't make a sound. And the problem with reading music, reading transcriptions particularly, is you're trying to process everything through your eyes rather than through your ears. And I would say with transcriptions, what you really need to do is take a much, much smaller example. So if you were dealing with, I don't know, Mr. PC by John Coltrane, focus on taking those first four bars of Coltrane solo. You know, just focus on that little bit. It takes time. Transcription's a skill. There's plenty of lessons on CambridgeSaxophone.com. Um, if you're interested in learning how to transcribe, I'd strongly advise you to go over there. And the big thing I'm always saying to people on there is take your time, do it slowly, and think about it's much better to just learn a tiny little bit of music. I don't know whether I should be wearing shades here or not. All's good. I don't know whether I like these or not. I can't see in the viewfinder whether it's any good. Um, I kind of know why some guys who do vlogs kind of use shades because what it means is that whilst it looks like I'm looking at you down the lens, I'm actually looking uh, down there. But that's it for now. I am going to go and get something to eat. It was the, 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 the crossroads of our being and it was a hell of a crossroads. For me, the picture of the Civil War as a historic phenomenon is not on the battlefield. It's not about weapons. It's not about soldiers. So that was a little clip from Ken Burns's film about the American Civil War. And I'm intrigued by it. I don't know enough about the American Civil War. And, but I guess most of you who watch this in the States don't know much about the English Civil War and the Battle of Naseby and those kind of things. Some of you will do. Some of you smart guys will have already written a comment in the comment box there just for my little um, supposing that you didn't know. But most of you probably won't. And most people in England don't know much about the American Civil War. And this whole thing that's happened with the Confederate statues, some people who've emailed me kind of made me realise I've got a little little bit of a blind spot there. I don't quite know enough and I know Ken Burns will not always be totally accurate but I wanted to fill it in because I was reading something in the Times the other week that John Sopel, who's the BBC's Washington correspondent, whilst Britain and America share the English language we are not the same countries. We have quite different cultures and kind of through the 20th century through you know kind of collaborating on wars and becoming close allies we kind of think that we're much closer than we are and yet we are quite removed that atlantic ocean can be quite wide at times and whilst britain likes to think of itself as this bridge between the united states and europe we are different aren't we and there are things that i just didn't know about so i'm kind of trying to read up it's kind of like in the west wing the other week that i was listening back to this podcast it was amazing that justin trudeau in who's the canadian prime minister justin trudeau justin trudeau isn't it and they were talking about uh, the character Lord John Marbury in the West Wing, who is the um, England um, English ambassador to... There's no such thing as the English ambassador. It's the British ambassador, okay? And it's kind of the United Kingdom government. There is no Queen of England. She's the Queen of the United Kingdom. You get what I mean. It's those kind of differences and different things. And I want to know more and find out more about the American Civil War. And I'm going to really enjoy watching that Ken Burns Civil War film as... A precursor to doing the jazz podcast i'm just working on some background stuff now it's moving forward a little bit hopefully it will be coming very very soon so please stay tuned please keep watching the vlogs i won't be vlogging now probably until maybe thursday i have though a very special vlog coming up for you next week i have just booked a test drive in a tesla and on that note i'll say thank you very much for watching please do subscribe if you don't already and i'll see you very very soon